evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Life Positive Show. Tonight, we have a very special guest with us. He is Mr. Hitesh Vashisht, uh, who likes to call himself a body, mind, spirit connection coach. A student of Brahmarshi Subhash Patriji and Dr. Newton and Lakshmi Pandavetti. He is the author of the best selling book, Sundaram Speaks. Uh, which unravels one of the most fascinating realities of the metaphysical world. So welcome, Hitesh, to the Life Positive Show. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you today. Uh, when I read your book. Thank you, Suvizi. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. So when I got hold of Hitesh's book, I was completely mesmerized and I did not know that it was, it was possible to have such realities uh, in, in and around us, we may not be uh, cognitively aware of, but which are impacting us all the time. So that, that was the moment I decided to speak to Hitesh and find out more about this fascinating person, his life, his journey, and what led him to pen a fascinating book called Sundaran Speak, which is a great gift to mankind and just bound to transform the lives of anybody who reads it. Thank you, Hitesh. Thank you for coming to the show. So let me begin with my first question to you. So tell us something about yourself on your life journey and what led you to write Sundaram Speaks. Right. So uh, uh, I was born in a very small town in Punjab, Khanna. So my education happened there. I lived in a joint family where all uncles and my parents and everybody lived together. And, uh, you know, so it was a big family of around 25 members living in one, under one roof. So that's how I grew, uh, you know, under, uh, you know, the, I would say the nourishment that I received from my mother, father. I remember uh, while I was a child, my mother still says that I never sung a lullaby for you. I would always sing bhajan for you. You know, so I think that impact was there uh, from the very beginning. And uh, even today, when I see my mother has turned around 70 years, uh, the kind of discipline that she carried in those days, she carries it right now also. I've never seen her miss her discipline, be it, uh, you know, a wedding coming, be it she's falling sick. So, so much of inspiration, you know, I draw from her. Uh, in my life and uh, so for education I moved outside the city for the higher education and you know I uh, happened to be an MBA human resources I did really well as far as the studies was concerned and I got the job of my choice you know and that is how I landed into you know I can say the city of malls Gurgaon so that is how I landed into this city and uh, I started to work as a human resource professional uh, for a apparel and a fashion house. So I was doing fairly well and, you know, I started to grow up the hierarchy, organization hierarchy really mm -hmm. well. But there came a time when I started to feel that something is missing, you know, and I missed that guidance, which is what I feel if I see uh, from here, I missed uh, somewhere that somebody could guide me into that, uh, you know, that organizational culture and, you know, how can I lead myself and take myself further. But I think life was the biggest guidance that came on its own. And uh, a few years later, you know, I was speaking to my sister over the phone call. And she said that uh, it is 2007. She said that, hey, I started to meditate. Why don't you also start to meditate? And I think that was the day when I started. Within five minutes, she, you know, she shared, and this is how we do, and this is how we watch our breath. And I think that was the time when journey started. I followed it with all my seriousness and with total devotion. And uh, with my you know, with my consistency, I saw that the things are unfolding on its own. Life started to unfold, although it unfolds for everyone naturally, but that mm -hmm. is how it started to unfold for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, there came a time uh, in 2010 that uh, I met Shubhangi, so uh, my wife. And once we met, the journey became really fast. You know, mm -hmm. instead of having the speed of an aeroplane, I have... Uh, uh, you know, I got to have the speed of a rocket, 
you know, much more fast and the ascension was fast. Mm -hmm. And I think by her coming into my life and she also brought forward many other gifts and people mm -hmm. who could guide me, who could help me with my questions and curiosity that I carried. So Patriji came, Ramrishi Patriji came and Dr. Newton, Dr. Lakshmi. So mm -hmm. all these came one after the other, you know, and I would say uh, just when I met Shubhangi, I met Shubhangi in July and I met uh, Patriji just two months after that. The moment we, we met and then just two months after that, everything started to roll. Okay, great. Uh, Hitesh, these days the concepts of twin flame is very much in vogue and everybody seems to be discussing it and talking about it. Some rubbish it and some swear by it. So what do you uh, consider your relationship with uh, Shubhangi? Is it a soulmate relationship or is it a twin flame relationship? In Under which section would you categorize so, uh, it? Frankly, and if, yeah. right. and yeah. if, if if so, then why? You also need to give us a reason. Right. So, uh, well, uh, frankly, I don't uh, pay much attention to twin flame concept uh, because I feel uh, uh, one has to find a flame within. You have to uh, find an inner mate to have uh, that mate outside. Uh, and I think the more you are aligned, for example, I'm in a masculine body uh, and the, my dominant portion is masculine, then uh, I have to find that inner feminine. Uh, uh, and if you are uh, in the more dominant in you is feminine, you have to find that inner masculine. Mm. Once you are complete within, then you manifest people outside. They can be soulmate, they can be twin flame. It doesn't mm. matter. All that matters is that you you hold that space the way you hold it for yourself. Mm. I think that's how okay. I look at it. So okay. do you do feel that she is your divine counterpart? In absolutely, life. in all terms and great, uh, great. absolutely. Great. So does it feel like a Shiva Shakti union? Uh, well, definitely because uh, uh, it is not one plus one is two. It is one plus one is 11. Mm. And uh, I see the love that we carry for each other because uh, as a youngster, I carried, you know, all these notions. How can one be with someone for a lifetime? Won't they get bored? Mm -hmm. You know, I would say, how can I share my closet and wardrobe with someone, you know? Mm -hmm. Having somebody in the bedroom for lifetimes, how can you share your bed all the time with someone? You know, I carried all these notions, but mm -hmm. they fell flat, uh, you know, I would say. And I can say that it is the most cherished gift I've had so far and it has grown over the period of time and it is and, and every day is a blooming I I see that the love is increasing exponentially so I think uh, that's how I feel okay. so Hitesh please tell us something about your LVL episode right. with Dr. Newton Kondavati where you you were a very a higher reality was revealed to you and right. certain major revelations were also made on that day to you. Right. So what was what was it and what was your greatest takeaway from that experience? Right. So uh, I, you know, in 2011, I started to, you know, uh, learn different healing modalities with Dr. Newton and Dr. Lakshmi. Mm -hmm. I was trained into inner child, past life regression and rebirthing breath work, family mm -hmm. constellation work you know, and many other neuro-linguistic practices. So in 2000 and, uh, 2018, I, you know, I happened to be uh, going for a training program, which was Life Between Life. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that program, uh, you know, uh, he, so usually it's a training program, you know, so you are given, sir would give a demonstration and we will understand, all the participants will understand from it. And then post lunch, we will get the opportunity to do it one on one. I mean, somebody doing it on me, facilitating it on me, and the, you know, I facilitating it for someone. And that is how the training was planned. So I happened to be on the third day, uh, you know, it was a very deep meditation because we would start our days with meditation. And while in the morning I was meditating, I felt that there is something that has come really close to me. Mm -hmm. a very thin layer of energy I could feel that as if it is flowing like this you know and I'm touching something which is not visible to the real eyes and 
I felt a very strong presence, highly strong mm-hmm. presence of some energy. And uh, so post the meditations are said, we will have a demonstration. Mm-hmm. And who would like to have it today? And mm-hmm. I just raised my hand and out of that group and he said, you hit this. Mm-hmm. So I think that's how it started. And uh, that session went for uh, close to three, three and a half hours. And uh, in that three and a half hours, I think uh, a door that was opening slowly, I would say that door was there for me always and it was opening in its own time. Mm -hmm. But that very moment Mm -hmm. came as a big push to open that door, you know, once and for all. And Mm -hmm. that door is to connect with your own oversoul or higher self or your parent soul, or you call it just your soul. Because each one of us wish to connect with our soul. Each one of us wish to have conversation and insights from our soul. Although these insights come to us in bits and pieces, but uh, there could be many reasons that we are not able to hold it because we are ignored or we are too much into our conscious world and we, we say, oh, it is superficial, it is some ghost voice inside of me, it is not my voice, I don't want to do it. So... You know, it's too much of Bhautik Jeevan takes mm-hmm. over us. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think uh, that was the time when I started to build that connection strongly with Sundaram. Mm-hmm. And this energy presented to me with the name of Sundaram. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so if you see the word Sundaram, Sundaram means beauty. Mm-hmm. So I, with him... Uh, or I would say not him or her, a very androgynous energy because energies do not have a gender specifically. So with that energy, I started to realize what actually Sundaram means. How does it, uh, how does it mean to be having the eye of Sundaram? Because each one of us have these two eyes. But this is the eye of Sundaram, you know, the mm-hmm. third eye. Not just Shiva has it, we all have it. Mm-hmm. And to be able to see beauty in everything is what uh, Sundaram says. And now it doesn't mean that, oh, I have to see beauty in misery. What mm-hmm. it actually means is how do you see beauty in the misery? By knowing the meaning behind the existence of that misery. Okay. So now again, it brings uh-huh. me back to a certain question which I had in mind. Yesterday, I was scrolling through Facebook and then there I came across a very heartbreaking video of an animal waiting for its turn before the slaughterhouse. It had tears in its eyes. It was a bull and it knew it it was going to be had and it was hoping for some mercy to come from somewhere. And I think at the same time, uh, somebody comes near him and kind of bows before it, thinking that his cries and his pleas have been heard. But it was not to be, and he was eventually taken to the butcher. So it was very heartbreaking. Uh, and I did realize that I wish if I had been over there, so I would have done anything to uh, stop it from being killed. But I do realize that if it's not happening, then somewhere perhaps it's part of its own life plan. Yet at the same time, it is not uh, easy to see beauty in it. Right. What beauty could be there in uh, seeing an, a helpless animal plead for its life and it's not being uh, heard or responded to? So that was very, from a very higher plane, it could be beautiful. But from this level, I, I think it's very, it's a very ugly depiction of the cruelty which is there in our hearts, lack of mercy which is there in the human heart. Right. So how do you explain beauty when you see something like this come across you? Right. So, well, <clears throat> violence is definitely, you know, something that needs to be attended at a group level, at a group mm-hmm. consciousness level. Mm-hmm. But there are many ways to help people, let's say, specifically in the case of, uh, you know, killing animals and, you know, using them, uh, having them on your plate. Mm-hmm. So there are many ways to teach people. Of mm-hmm. course, uh, it needs a lot of patience and the higher energy has been teaching us with a lot of patience. If we say that it is the God's world and God is allowing this to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So we can see how much level of patience that he would be carrying for, you know, all the creatures that are there on the earth. Mm -hmm. But all I can say is that we need to uh, come together to educate them Mm -hmm. and uh, educate them in different ways. For example, you know, helping them read a book, 
wherein they can understand mm. uh, if they cannot understand by our order or by anything mm. it's not like that you you miss your alignment right? mm. you can do whatever you want for example krishna did everything that he could do in kurukshetra mm. but he did not miss his alignment Mm-hmm. he was always aligned so we can do whatever we want you can mm-hmm. also practice or maybe you can go there and you can tell him never to do it mm-hmm. or we can do some other ways we can always do that mm-hmm. but the beauty means to be in alignment with your own self mm-hmm. even if you are doing that mm-hmm. we must put our focus that this imperfection also holds perfection that mm-hmm. is what beauty means that in the greater picture there is perfection even if we see in the smaller picture there is imperfection okay fine so hitesh in your book you also mention about your experience of uh, having uh, you know, passed over and gone to the other side during your life between life regression where you saw this happening and you also write that uh, you realize that you, you were quite a, a merciless tax collector in a particular lifetime and you had uh, harassed uh, many many people and uh, to the extent that they had already turned against you and uh, killed you and uh, at the moment of uh, passing away you realized that you you deserved it because you had inflicted so much pain on people whereas uh, in your onward journey we see that you are welcomed very warmly uh, by some very uh, benevolent energy on the other side it embraces you and it just very gently shows you uh, how you were uh, Uh, functioned in your previous life and instead of uh, you no know, kind of condemning you to nether regions which are full of pain and suffering as a uh, no as a punishment for whatever actions you committed it just gave you the opportunity to reform change your ways and become the opposite of what you had been in your previous life. now this is not something which we ever come across in any of the scriptures which are like currently available on earth it's not mentioned anyway mostly what we read are the different uh, lokas uh, and based on your actions you go to those lokas if you've been a very good and benevolent soul you will go to a higher place if you not be something like that then you you are condemned to those nether regions which are full of pain and suffering which is like which is which which explains the the, the karmic pattern that you as you so so shall you uh, shall you reap which makes sense to all human beings but we don't see this in this account which you written that it rather the opposite happened so can you tell us which one is true so what is written in our scriptures is it incorrect and your experience is uh, like has more uh, well logic uh, to it yeah so i have total respect for our scriptures mm-hmm. and uh, but i also wanted to say scriptures also mention mm-hmm. that your view of god creates the god mm-hmm. so what is the view that you are holding about the god mm. are you holding him as a god as as somebody who sits there and is you know doing the debit credit of you or is waiting to punish you the moment you move out of your body or mm. even when you are in the body or are you thinking of somebody who is just like a mother to you mm. so that matters you know mm. so there is no rule of thumb that is given as far as the god is concerned god mm. is pure consciousness mm. the whichever way you want to mold it it will mold it in that same reality mm. and i think mm. that is what my experience says the god is for me is all loving all pervading mm. and all embracing and that is how we all have the ability to be embraced it doesn't mean that i don't have to learn what what i have gone through or whatever but that energy holds you into the space of deep self love that means yes so hitesh can you tell us which uh, idea of god you held in that particular lifetime even though you yourself uh, pride that you were not a very kind person but right. is it true that you considered divine to be a very kind and benevolent entity which will embrace you with a lot of love and warmth once you pass over no matter uh, what you do on earth is it right. true Uh, because that is how it explains i don't understand because most people who are of, of uh, such nature in any incarnation they either don't believe in god right. or uh, they feel that uh, somehow god is blind to their actions and whatever they are enjoying here they will enjoy in the hereafter as well so can right. you tell me what was your thought process regarding the divine in that particular right. incarnation 
Yeah, so I would also like to mention that it is not just about an, an incarnation and a reincarnation that we can see, no. because it is not just that, you know, there are many other incarnations that are at play when it comes to writing the script for the very next time. Mm -hmm. We all have had a mix of victim, perpetrator, mm -hmm. a saintly, a warrior lifetimes, a kingly, queenly lifetimes, a pauper, mm -hmm. a pauper lifetimes. All of us have had a mix of lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And why so? Because all these lifetimes put together, all these experiences put together help us to write the next lifetime. Mm -hmm. So it is not just about that. There are many other lifetimes that are at play and wherein I created that belief. So I, I don't mention about those lifetimes because uh, it's not about blowing the trumpet or praising yourself. But yes, there are lifetimes wherein, you know, I've had uh, a realization of what spirituality means and I was mm -hmm. practicing that, I was following that. And that also brings you know, the realization, because soul carries the realization, it has the memory of all, mm. right? And that is how we carry it. Mm. So I think I would say it is a club of all the in incarnations put together mm. and okay. wherein I created that dominant belief that God is all loving and all pervading. Mm. And that is how the energies lead us after life. we are on an evolutionary journey. So if we start from a lower consciousness and gradually we evolve to a state of higher consciousness. But it also seems from what you're talking that it is it, it may not be the thumb rule. It, the path may be very undulating. You may be a saint in one lifetime and one small incident or one small trigger can lead you to do or uh, think of certain things which may uh, result in you having a polar opposite incarnation. You may go from a, a saint to, be, to being a sinner. Uh, so, is it true or is it? Uh, is it uh, yeah, so well, just... yeah. So, you have the opportunity to write your script, your life mm -hmm. scripts. You are mm -hmm. the actor, director, villain, mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. say. You can be anyone. Mm -hmm. It is not about the quality or, or, or what you have written in your lifetime, it is mm -hmm. what choices you make once you are on the earth. Right. So, for example, oh, I wrote a saintly lifetime. I have this and that, and I carry that past life, you know, energy, and I carry that goods that I've created. But what do I do out here? That matters. So, if the choices I did not make good choices, then you know that takes you to, you know, uh, it would not be of any use. So that choices also matter. Yes. Yes. That's true. I, I so agree with you, Vitesh. Um, also, uh, you know, tell us uh, about the four phases of karma which you mentioned in your book. What do you mean by that? What are the four phases of karma? Okay. So karma, most of the times we feel that it is uh, as you sow, so shall you reap. Well, it is Correct. definitely right. Mm -hmm. But karma in... Uh, as per Sundaram, it is karma means attachment. Anything that you are attached to will create karma. Mm -hmm. so for example, uh, obviously bad we get attached to. Oh, I have done this and that. And there is nothing called good and bad mm -hmm. per se. But then good also, if people are doing a lot of charity, a lot of good work, they get attached to it. Oh, I did. I feed so many people and I gave so much of charity. If you are doing that, that means you are attached to it. Mm -hmm. right? You are attached to the identity. That itself is a karma. Mm -hmm. right? So attachment creates karma. And, uh, uh, you know, over the progression that we go as far as the evolution of our journey is concerned, we pass through these four phases of karma. You know, we, we realize one after the other. Mm -hmm. You know, the first uh, phase is called Vismaya Mukham. Vismaya Mukham. Vismaya means uh, surprise. Anything comes to you as a surprise. Mukham means the face. Now, this is the face of karma wherein you are looking to this face, which is called Vismaya Mukham. Everything comes to you as a surprise. Uh, if bad happens to you, you will say, oh, how come it is happening to me? Why it is happening to me? We are so cribbing of it at an outside layer that we never bother to look at the second phase. And we spend more, you know, many of our lifetimes in that ignorance, that why this, why that, why me, why him, you know, all that. And that is called 
Vismaya Mukha. That means always held up in the energy of surprise and you know, all the uncertainty comes as a surprise to you. Right. And the second thing is called Dvandva Mukha. Dvandva Mukha means two. Dvand means there is a, there's a tiff that is happening. Mm. And what is these two? That means cause and effect, mm. which is what we usually feel. There is a cause and there is an effect. Of course, there is a cause and there is an effect. But that doesn't have to stop here. There is another layer to it. So most of us, we live in this. Dvandva Mukha. Bura karenge, bura hoga. But bura kisne decide kya? You know, where is the definition of that pura? Where is the definition of good? Of course, there are some things in the universe that are not held in a good terms, wherein we can say, uh, for example, killing, you know. So mm -hmm. that has to be, you know, uh, taken in that zone. But then from this second zone, we move to the third zone, mm -hmm. which is, you know, uh, from... Uh, uh, what we say is the first is Vispaya Mukham, then Dvandva Mukham, and then we move to the third one, which we call Antar Mukham. Mm -hmm. And then there this curiosity arises. Oh, where is this cause and effect happening from? Where did that cause happen? You know, why do I have this effect? People start, want to go into that cause, understand that cause. What led you to create that cause? Mm -hmm. And what was the actual meaning of that cause? What it wanted you to feel? You know, all that we start to ask. And when we get into that, automatically the answers would not be found outside. You will eventually have to turn with it. And that is why it says Antar Mukham, that you close these eyes and now you look within. All answers are within. Everything has to be found within. And slowly when the karmas are handled from that space, you start to understand everything. And with that, uh, you know, understanding with that unlearning of everything, we move to the fourth phase of karma, which we call Kevalam Mukha. Kevalam Mukha means only that. There's no other Mukha. And Kevalam Mukha means everywhere that power exists. Mm -hmm. So the main ingredient of everything is that power. Mm -hmm. That thing which is holding it. You know, mm -hmm. for example, a wheel is held by the very center. Mm -hmm. And the spokes are attached to it. In the same way, my very center is that power. Kevalam Mukham. Only looking to that. Mm -hmm. Your center is that. That misery somebody is going through. I might do everything to give my best. But at the same time, I have to understand that comes from the Kevalam Mukham. Mm -hmm. That person like me holds Kevalam Mukham. Mm -hmm. That dog who is going through that is also coming from that. He also holds the Kevalam Mukham. That is... When we start to see that, there is no other way than to not, not see perfection. Because mm -hmm. if that Kevala Mukham is perfect, mm -hmm. then everything that is built around is perfect. And once we begin to see that, that means you are not doing anything. You are mm -hmm. a medium to it. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm doing good. I'm not. I'm no one. Right? Mm -hmm. He is the one that is holding. And when we come from that space, mm -hmm. there is no karma that can hold. Karma becomes no karma. Achha. So I'll ask you another question, Videsh, which uh, I want you to ask, answer in all honesty, because I feel that you have had that experience. So were you able to experience that particular state of Aham Brahmasmi any time in your life? And if so, then what was it like? Would you like to share it with our listeners tonight? So, well, I would say that... Uh, mm -hmm. It is not that every time I live into that Aham Brahmasmi state yeah. and our higher potential is to grow to that. Yeah. But yes, there are fragments, bits and pieces where each one of us have that experience. Right? And I think uh, 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 sometimes listening to something opens up the Aham Brahmasmi. Sometimes, sometimes seeing an emotion of love which moves you, gets you into that promotion, that feeling of aham brahmasmi sometimes somebody's words make you feel that aham brahmasmi mm -hmm. sometimes even silence makes you feel aham brahmasmi so i would say there are no particular moments as such but yes all these experiences put together has definitely brought in uh, mm -hmm. uh, moments of that and i am on my journey to expand into those moments mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm enjoying that journey. Okay. So, uh, Hitesh, 
vashisht before the sterilization and videsh vashisht after this sterilization what is the clear distinct difference that you see between two videshas of the past and of the present uh, how would you compare yourself with your uh, mindset on how you used to function in your past so you do it now so before realization i would say well that was also a perfect hitesh but yes mm -hmm. that hitesh from the outside i felt to be non deserving i felt angry guilty i mm -hmm. felt worthless mm -hmm. and uh, which has now transformed into uh, just be mm -hmm. it's okay if i even if uh, there is an element of worthless but it doesn't matter what mm -hmm. matters is how i look at it mm -hmm. so it is not the work of i it is the work of sight the mm -hmm. pure consciousness lives in your sight not in your eyes so i think the way i look at it now mm -hmm. has shifted and i think the when we start to look at things in the same way we begin to get that realization which can be so empowering and i think by that that worthlessness has shifted into worthy deserving loving mm -hmm. uh it's okay to have variety of emotions anger uh, everything being put together mm -hmm. but held in the space of non judgment and total embrace um brain that that was great acha hitesh ek cheez aur batai you do you do seem to come across as somebody who's who's very stable spiritually emotionally mentally there does not seem to be any inner conflict in you and which i suppose is by the virtue of all your spiritual work and experiences that you've had especially the sadhanas which you must have done to ye bataiye ki kitna ek to hota hai ki study karna kyunki jab aap path pe hote hain to even studies matter a lot you study your scriptures you study the vedas you study the upanishads and then you try to match your progress with what is mentioned and then you can rate yourself how how far you've come aapko kya lagta hai ki kya aaj bhi wo relevant hai ye jo satya hai ya jo truth hai wo sari book se bhi beyond hai agar koi vyakti atmasthit hai ya this is quite centered in him you know herself does he still need to refer to those scriptures to know the truth or it is you know, he does not even if he does not he is very well uh, rooted in himself and and is is very one with the absolute truth क्या जरूरी है उसको पढ़ना उनको जानना द ट्रूथ इज नॉट समथिंग दैट कैन बी एक्सप्लेन फुली बिकॉज इफ यू ट्राई टू पुट द ट्रूथ इन टू वर्ड्स दैट यू आर मिसिंग द ट्रूथ यू कैन गिव सम एग्जांपल्स टू एक्सप्लेन द ट्रूथ ट्रूथ कैन ओनली बी फेल्ट सो फॉर एग्जांपल इफ आई से व्हाट मेक्स दिस पेन पेन Seven components are there. There's a refill. There's a cover. It's the refill. The main component. If I take out the refill, what will be the ex ex existence of this pen? This will no more be a pen. It will be just mm -hmm. plastic. Plastic. Same way. What is my main component? Mm -hmm. I can explain the truth only from that space. I cannot name it because if I start to name it like that, if I start mm -hmm. to give it some name the way I have named, that mm -hmm. means. thing on the truth you have started to put it and if you try to put it in the boundaries truth is such that it would begin to expand further you mm -hmm. it will be beyond your reach that mm -hmm. so truth can only be felt it can never be put into describe describe that's so true these scriptures that have been made upanishads you know they are called darshan shastra you know there are darshan every rishi has given a darshan Mm -hmm. you know a perspective in the olden days the teachers will not called as teachers they will be called as perceptors you know because mm -hmm. they carry their perception to look at something and the same way each one of has has the ability to carry that perception mm -hmm. the perceptor within each one of us mm -hmm. and when you start to look at your life from your own perspective you are learning not just from the books but from your own life experiences mm -hmm. there could be somebody who has gone through all the books yet cannot get moved by somebody's tears or somebody not being fed it could be anything mm -hmm. uh, you know so that would be of would be of no use okay. the books are there to give us the guidelines mm -hmm. it's it is a guideline but mm -hmm. 
journey has always to be done with it right so thank you acha hitesh you also uh, write in a very fascinating treatise on time in your book where you describe the movement of time and how uh, time gets restricted in a place which is low energy and low level of consciousness and it moves very very fast uh, in a region where the consciousness level is higher um in this context i would like to know then what is the state of timelessness uh, i think it's a very a uh, complicated question because this also is being discussed a lot in current times about the state of timelessness now this is something very uh, incomprehensible to human beings they don't know anyways we are always chasing after time and still time is always beyond our grasp we are controlled by time then we you talk about a different dimension which is very uh, interesting people who want to experience it and then what in comparison is the state of timelessness right uh, is it a very you know a very constant state the state of being unchangeable because time also brings about change whereas truth is considered to be something which does not change it will stay in its way so kya uh, time se usko kaise aap samjhane samjhayenge thoda so if i say uh, let's say who is timeless if i ask this question we all know this answer who is timeless who is timeless in you maybe i will say my soul yes so that soul is not restricted to a dimension mm-hmm. it is quite logical you know because mm-hmm. if i am here it is there so timelessness is that pure consciousness which exist across dimensions it ex- exist in the patal loka it exist in all the 14 lokas that we've spoken about mm-hmm. right so it is not restricted to one but yes when it comes to living in certain dimension a dimension is held by a time and space right more the space more will be uh, slower will be the movement of time right for example if i am sitting in this room how fast i can move i can move like how fast i can give an orbit it would be fast it is going to be quick mm-hmm. but if in from this one room if i move into a whole house the movement is going to be slower than the earlier and the same way if i talk about my earth it is going to be even slower so same way there are planet that means the space decides the fast movement you know mm-hmm. how fast you can move there mm-hmm. are dimensions that are above us that mm-hmm. are wide in space and what does it mean how is space created space is created by the dominance of the consciousness present on that space for example there is a certain dominance of consciousness that earth carries these days we are saying oh we've moved from third to fourth to fifth ultimately we are to fifth why that means there is a consciousness shift in each one of us and when the consciousness of every individual shifts it expands the state of the entire planet or wherever we have entire dimension we are living mm-hmm. and now the time has become fast mm-hmm. uh, i don't know if you heard many people these days they say दिन कब शुरू होता पता ही नहीं चलता इतनी जल्दी समय निकल रहा है होता ट्रू बिकॉज देर इज अर इज वन शक्यूमन रेजोनेस वेर इन यू मेजर दर्थ हार्ट बीट इनिशियली इट वॉज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स अ डे राइट नाउ वी माइट लुक इट एट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स बट दे हैव कम डाउन टू एटीन आवर्स अ डे राइट सो this expansion of that the vibration of the earth has changed and mm-hmm. when the vibration changes the space expands when the space expands the time you know gets into that zone what, what do you mean by expansion of space do you mean that the uh, the earth we are living on right now is also in, increasing in its surface area no 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 it no, means no. the consciousness uh-huh. the expansion in the consciousness mm-hmm. you don't have to the mind brain will not increase in size mm-hmm. Mm. matter will not the mind can mm. Mm. mind is the vibration mm. mind has the power to connect to the the supreme being the soul mm. Right? Mm. if you don't have the expansion in the mind we mm. will be only in the lower mind mm. Mm. that is what i mean by space okay uh, this explanation of time has always uh, somehow kind of uh, put a question before me when we say that uh, we don't realize how fast the time has gone so why are we relating it with time 
movement of time. I feel the time is still the same. It is still moving at the same space. It depends on how much conscious you are of its movement. If nice. you are too conscious of the movement, you will feel that, oh my God, it is like never ending. If you are not too conscious of its movement, you will feel Are where the time went. So it's less about the time and more about how minutely you are observing its movement. Absolutely. So, so that so, minute observance, where is it coming from? It's coming from the expansion in mind. It's mm -hmm. our awareness. It's our way of looking. It's actually meditative. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. It's not that you just have to sit and meditate. You mm -hmm. meditate when you are in awareness of everything you are already into that expansive state of mind you are already seeing everything in the net right mm -hmm. not as just one unit everything put together is one unit so mm -hmm. that is the state of expansion okay so uh, i'll take one last question from you uh, you also write about prakriti and maya now maya is something which baffles all of us and we all feel uh, very much uh, tormented by maya Whereas you say that Prakriti is, is very benevolent, it's very kind, it's, it's very nurturing. So how to make the distinguish, the, uh, how to distinguish between Prakriti and Maya? How to make that distinction? Uh, right. When, uh, uh, how to shift from uh, Maya to Prakriti also? Okay. Uh, uh, well, if, if uh, the consciousness has two aspects, right? One is the Purusha and the other one is Prakriti. Mm -hmm. Now, when the existence started to develop it, itself further, it needed these two energies. That means somebody who would sit, somebody who would play. Mm -hmm. Who would sit? The Purusha will sit mm -hmm. like the father. You know, the father sits kaam karke aajate, and he sits at the background and he sees the family playing. Who plays with the child? Mother. Right? And that is how the play goes. The father sits in the background, arranges for everything, and the mother goes further to engage with the child. And same is the work between both. So father and mother energies, both these energies, Purusha and Prakriti energies, both these energies come together in our body. There is an observer, there is somebody who is engaging into the world, being put together. That mm -hmm. is how we are living. So these are Purusha and Prakriti energies. Now, when we start to you know, come into the existence. The, the very layer of the existence wherein we start to separate ourselves from that. Because our thought is, oh, we have stuck here. Oh, we have gone Oh, I'm separate from God. This very separation is the layer of Maya. You know, that very separation makes us feel, oh, I am different, he is different, or she is different. How can I be so loving? I mean, how can I be embraced? I am a such a, you know, sinner and I've done this, this, this. How can they embrace me? Mm -hmm. If there are parents, be it saint or a sinner, they will embrace us equally. Right? That's another view of God, right? So that layer, that separation is called Maya. Now, Maya has a divine purpose. Most of us, we get into Maya and we keep, Cribbing about Maya, oh Maya, ye, Maya, wo. But Maya has, Maya itself is a mother to all of us. Aap apne life mein dekho, whatever you needed, it is being provided to you by Maya. Right? She carries that divine form. She is the mother herself. But she wants to tell us that I am not somebody where you should stop. There is somebody else. Come and meet my true face. Mm -hmm. Maya is a mask. Mm -hmm. But she takes care of you. She handles you well. Mm -hmm. And she's handling us well. Mm -hmm. But then there is something called Divya aspect of that. That is the mother, actually the Prakriti aspect, which is the actual form of Maya. No, I want to see something more of you. Tell me more. Mm -hmm. Only those can reach when we they ask, who am I? Mm -hmm. Where have I come from? So that is how we reach to that Prakriti aspect. See, yeah, uh, right. I remember that Sri Ram Krishna Paramahansa said that Maya said that no, don't, don't, uh, don't, do not treat her inimically as though she is your enemy. Uh, genuflect before her, fall down before her, ask her to lift that way. And then she herself will lead you to the ultimate. Absolutely. So that's a, that was a very profound way of uh, helping human beings relate with this aspect of Maya and not consider her as their enemy.
That was great, Hitesh. Uh, do you like to have, uh, do you have a message for our viewers tonight? Any message would you like to share? So, my message to mm -hmm. viewers is don't get busy into thinking for life, right? Experience life fully. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Uh, if you're busy thinking, that means you will keep thinking, you will not live. Mm -hmm. And if you live, then thinking aspect will be taken care of. You don't have to worry. So my only message is to live, experience it joyfully, experience even if it is a topsy turvy, you know, all those trials, tribulations coming, but then we can still have that joyful, live it joyfully, whatever you do. It's not about doing a thing joyfully. It's about doing everything joyfully. And that is how we experience life fully. Thank you. Thank you, Tesh. That was one very profound message from you. You have enlightened our viewers. You have empowered them. Uh, you, you have given them a new hope today. Thank you so much for being there uh, tonight. And to be a great pleasure to welcome you once again on this platform. We look forward to that day. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for giving us a precious Thank time. You. We're truly, truly grateful to you. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Thanks. Thank you.